stand giving honor to the Word of God, I'd like for you to turn with me in your Bibles to one of the most familiar scriptures uh, in, that is preached in the Christian church. Amen. And that is Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 1 and 2. I'd like for you to turn there with me right now. God is so good. Glory. Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2. Scripture reads like this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Here you go. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Amen. Will you pray with me right now? Father, we thank you for your presence We ask, Lord, that you will open our minds and our hearts, uh, that we will be sensitive to the leading of your Spirit, that you may be glorified in our midst, uh, and that you, Almighty God, may have your perfect will. We ask that your people will be edified through the ministry, and that you will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Can you give the Lord a hand? Praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You may be seated. I would like to impress this thought on your hearts today and also entitle this message, Whose Report Will You Believe? Whose report will you believe? We used to sing a chorus, Whose report will you believe? Well, we still do. (laughs) I will believe in the, the report of the Lord. I want you to know there's lots of reports coming out. My goodness, we hear all kinds of things. And not only do we do th- hear all kinds of things in all these reports, we also are getting the same people reporting something different nearly every other day. We don't know whose report they're to believe, but there's one whose report I can believe, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can believe the report of the Lord. All the different things that are taking place around us right now, we're left in a little bit of a hesitation. But God is in control, I want you to know. He knew what we were going to be going through before we started going through it. God is still in control of everything that is taking place right now. I would like to uh, go to... Wow, I'm really having problems with my new uh, iPad here. Not get, I touch it certain places and it goes off. Uh, I would like to bring Hebrews 11, 1 and 2 up in the complete Jewish Bible, and then I'm going to visit the Amplified also. Complete Jewish Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Trusting in being confident of what we hope for convinced about things we do not see. Verse 2, it was for this that Scripture attested the merit of the people of old. Oh, boys now. Let's look at the Amplified. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. Now faith is the assurance, that is, title, deed, confirmation, of things hoped for, that is divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, that the conviction of the reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Now that's added, okay, that, that, they, that they're, comp, they're giving commentary on that. Verse 2, for by this, that is kind of faith, this men of old gain divine approval. Wow, I want you to look at what the Scripture is telling us, that it is by faith 
that even all those in the Old Testament got, uh, gained God's favor towards them. Without faith being exercised, God never gave them favor. Now, grace is the, is the favor of God. It is unmerited, but that is not the true he, uh, Greek definition or Hebrew. It is simply that he gave favor. It is favor of God. Now, the thing is, is that everybody that is in Christ has the favor of God. The same as any child has the favor of their parents above anyone else. So you want you to see. Grace is that unmerited, unearned favor of God towards his children. He's going to make a way for them. But there is something that takes place in the life of an individual when they really are trusting God and putting their trust in His divine ability. The deal is, is that they move to do something. The Word says in Hebrews 11 here that uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord when he moved to build the ark. And the, the deal is, is that God knows our purpose and whether or not we are going to move to fulfill the will of God or not. Grace, that is faith. It is grace through faith that we're saved. There's nothing that we do that is not, does not incorporate us exercising faith in God's word or his divine ability. Now, you don't move to do anything. You don't go to fulfill anything if you don't have faith in it. There are people that say faith is a simple expression, and that is not true. It is, that is false. That is not a true teaching of the Bible anyway. Faith is having confidence in the things that the Word has established without us first ever attesting or experiencing them. We believe it's going to happen because we walk in something that the world does not like to hear. You cannot separate faith from obedience. Obedience without faith is null and void. If you have faith, if you believe, you obey. If you do not have faith and you don't believe, you don't obey. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. But here I want you to see some things. I want you to see some things. We have a divine guarantee that God is going to honor the faith of his people. Because when you trust him, he has obligated himself, not you or me, but he has obligated himself to fulfill it. Praise the Lord. Turn to somebody and say, he's going to do it. It grants God's divine approval. Now, I know there are things that are taking place around us today that is testing our faith. It has not yet been tested to the extreme, but it is being tested. I don't know if it's going to go that far or not in this country, but still it may, but they are trying to. We find people that have been elected into office making statements that are very challenging to our belief system and our constitution and the scriptures that God has given us. And it is only that they are singling out the church of Jesus Christ for this uh, ridicule. You and I got to understand something. The f you got to see what the focus is on. You remember when the disciples went and were preaching and healing and delivering and, the, uh, and they gathered them up and they, they corrected them and they were going to beat them, and, or they did beat them, and they were going to uh, do more to them, but they said, look, let's just command them not to do anything else in his name. Hey, they don't care about the miracles. You can have miracles. Are you with me? It's all right. It's all right for you to have, to have miracles. Matter of fact, they attribute miracles now to any kind of thing. 
okay? They're, they're explaining away all kinds of stuff, and they have all kinds of people practicing things that are not Christian or not towards the one true God, and that are giving credit to those gods, okay, for the miracles and stuff that take place. So miracles, that, that they don't care if you lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. They don't care if we speak in tongues. Or, or, do you understand? Now, some other religious groups might care, but the world doesn't care. They don't care about any of this. But what they do care about is that you and I take a position on the name of Jesus Christ. They care about that. They don't care what we do as long as we do not give the credit to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But God is calling us to stand up like we've never have had to before. <laughs> All of the liberties that these people have were guaranteed because people like you and I beforehand, our elders, allowed them to have it. But we did not allow them to take our belief away, to, to restrict us, okay? So you and I have to understand, you are not restricted. You are protected, and God's going to be with you no matter what befalls us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 13, verses 26 through 33. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Para and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And, verse 27, And they told him and said, We came unto the land where you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. We brought back evidence that what God said is true. We brought back evidence that what God said is true. This land that you have sent your people to, it is filled with milk and honey. It's exactly what God said it was going to be. <laughs> Nevertheless, verse 28. Oh boy. There are those that are numbered among Christendom, quote, unquote. Everyone claiming to be a Christian. They say that everything what the word says is true, but listen, verse 27, nevertheless, they're saying, nevertheless, guys, we can vote against the things that the Scriptures uh, condemns and calls an abomination because, you know, we think we don't like something, somebody. I never did vote for a person's, okay, character all in all, though it does, does weigh on it. I voted on the policies. Do you remember me saying years ago and, and continued to say I would vote for an atheist if he upheld and protected the things of the church? Do you understand what I'm telling you? If they, uh, if we're not voting on what somebody did before. My goodness, if you voted on what somebody did before, I wouldn't be your pastor. Are you, are you with me? I would not be standing up behind a pulpit. I would, are, are you okay? But it's okay for anybody else to be forgiven. You ought to understand something. There was a transformation took place in the last four years. And I have believe it had a lot to do with the man that was with him. <laughs> and right now, transformation is taking place. God's still in control of all this. Listen, they said, though, everything that you said that was going to be in this land is in the land, but nevertheless, they be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Boy, now this is gets scary. They're def they, they built their defenses up. And very great. Their defenses are very great. Their arguments very great. <laughs> and moreover, we saw the children of Anak. Oh, and by the way, they got some giants on their side. They got some really wealthy people putting money into their bunch. 
They got giants on their side, the sons of Anak. Now, some people don't believe that these giants existed that were descendants of him, but there's all kinds of proof that they did. And uh, I, I just, you know, just want you to understand is that we have giants today, and they can actually give birth or through their genetic makeup, other people become giants through their lineage. So it's not something that's a far-out thing. And a giant is anyone, and uh, they, they may even, they used to be anybody from eight foot uh, up, but I think they've lowered it a little bit. I mean, uh, upped it a little bit. Uh, uh, from that, I don't know, but somebody eight foot tall, that's a pretty big dude. <laughs> okay, let alone somebody nine or ten feet tall. And it's not an impossible thing. But look, they saw these guys there, and it scares them. God, what you said is true. The land flows with milk and honey. It's prosperous. But when we got there and we spied it out, we saw these things there, walled cities, people that are ready for war, ready to defend, and it's going to be a hard thing for us to go and take it. Sometimes a Christian, when you come up to something that's a hard thing, you you back off of it. Christians cannot back off anymore. I talked with a friend of mine just prior to his death, I think either the, 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 the time before the last time I saw him or the last time, he made this statement. He said, it's the Christian's fault that things are taking place like they are because we withheld our voices when they went to take the Bible out of our public school system. That's what he said, and I didn't disagree. When they went to take God out, you know, they took out any reference to him before they actually stopped the Bible, which they really can't stop the Bible, by the way. You can take your Bible to school with you. You can do any of those things, all right? But all of that is, you know, but the idea is this. They took the references to God out. of it. So it takes the moral principles out. And so when you have God's moral pr- principles absent, What happens? We replace God's moral principles with man's concept of what morality is. And when we leave it to man, it gets really lower and lower every generation. I'm going to tell you there are things that the generation that is on the streets right now and the things they are saying, their morality is a lot different than yours and mine. What they consider to be moral is nothing like what you and I consider to be moral. They consider what we consider to be moral to be immoral. And we definitely consider what they are doing to be immoral. Okay? So we have a whole concept of morality that has been interrupted from what God originally intended morality to be. And the world is embracing this uh, this new morality. We're being told that we have a new uh, 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 a new normal. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I want the old guy back. I want the old guy back. I want the old normal back to where you could say whatever you felt was in you to say as uh, that you could uh, oppose a different view without being kicked off uh, or your post being taken out of Facebook or whatever else. I don't mean get on there and cuss and all that stuff, though they allow that. They, they allow that to, to happen. But but I, I posted something about saying uh, Americans, you know, or, or uh, that the direction that we went, I said Americans are really stupid, and they took me off and said that what they, they blocked it and said that what I said violated their uh, codes. And so I contested it because I'm an American. I could say Americans are stupid. You know what I mean? I, if I could say sh- Shinka Tiggers, which, they're, uh, you know, there's a lot changed all over here now. But you know how we used to play it, that they were just the normal, uh, you know, s- simple people. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
But they come back with me a couple of weeks later and said that uh, that they reviewed it and they still hold the same position. So I can't say Americans are stupid, even though I'm an American. Are you are you all right? I think it has more to do with the the, the sentence prior to that, me saying uh, things that uh, of embracing the evils and all this kind of stuff. But here we are. We're in a new new thing, and and you can't say anything. They want to control what you're saying and the information that you're getting. And I do want to tell you that there are alternatives to certain media outlets that you are able to go to and you can express yourself freely, all right? And But I, too, remember that there's just more than you and I. I don't mean, you know, I had a person come on, one of them, and made reference to something that I, that I said, and I forget what it was exactly now, and threatened me. They, they threatened me. I don't know why that's okay. You know, I, I, I don't know why. They, they said they didn't believe what I was saying, which I was relate. I don't want to get in on that. But I was relating my past to what was taking place and how that peaceful protest uh, differed from what was going on, okay? And, and, and they came back and cussed me out, uh, or a person did. I had lots of agree with me, of course. They had actually been through it. And, and said, I don't believe you ever did anything anyway, you blah, 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 wolf, 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 you know. And you know what I did? I didn't respond to them. I just took it off. You understand? They want me to get into that entanglement with them. I made the mistake when I first got on those things to do that. It do, it does you're not going to do anything because they're already programmed to try to get you uh, to get upset. That's the whole deal, okay? But listen, they said nevertheless, they're strong. They dwell in the land with cities that are walled and they're very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. They have a lot of support. They got some big dudes involved. All right? Verse 29. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites, they dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. We're surrounded by enemies. Lord, you're sending me into a place where I'm surrounded. Well, I don't know how familiar you all are with paratroopers, and I made a mistake by saying one time in a men's meeting that we didn't have them anymore, and that's false, and that's not true, and I'm taking it all back. We do have them, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> but in, during the Second World War, what we had were uh, uh, paratroopers, and, uh, and the paratroopers were brought in, flown into enemy territory, and dropped into the enemy territory. And so I'll never forget uh, the one commander of paratroopers, a guy who said, man, you, you, you're right in the middle of the enemy. He says, that's where we're supposed to be. Hey, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're supposed to be right smack dab in the middle of the enemy's territory. That's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be there. God has put you there. He's dropped you in there. He's got you there that you will be a witness to everyone around you. The Amalekites are there. Now, I want to focus just on a couple of these if I can. The Jebusites, of course, they were the ones that were ruling uh, Jerusalem. It didn't originally belong to the Jews. You say it originally belonged to the Jebusites. And they had to be defeated in order for Israel to have what is their very capital today. They they had to they had to uh, that well that's what they they claim is their capital. If that's what they claim, that's what it is. All right. And so it goes back all the way to here that they took over and conquered the Jebusites, and they were a very walled city. The Bible says they had a they had a tremendous uh, defense system set up. 
but God brought it down to them. Now, here's another group I want to focus on outside of the Canaanites, of course, that are dwell by the sea and the coast. You know, the Canaanites made up all kinds of people uh, that lived there, all right, which would become many of the people that are mixed and are there today of uh, Arab descent. But let's take a look at this. There were the Jebusites and the Amorites. They were up in the mountains. But look who else is here to the south, the Hittites. Now, the, the Bible is, was the only confirmation that these people were a great people. The archaeological evidence up until just, what, the 90s, I think, or 80s, was that these were a nomadic tribe and held no true position. Maybe it was the 60s. I'm sorry, 60s. That they held no true position of any kind of uh, 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 rulership over other lands and kingdoms. And now we have the, the very... Uh, capital city of the Hittites, and we have all their history and how that it was Egypt and the Hittites that were disputing for the control of the area here in Canaan and all of that land, and that the Hittites were a mighty army, and that they were also an army that did not, or, or people that did not originate there, but came there from uh, the European side over, okay, and that's why the Hittites had worshipped the same type of gods that the Greeks and the, uh, did and others did later. And we find a very familiar city that was uh, ruled by them and governed by them that we find in, in literature and history, and it is called Troy. And many people relate to the Trojan War and don't understand that they were actually ruled by the Hittite Empire and controlled everything there. So I want you to see that the Word of God is uh, I am so tired of why this does this. I don't understand. There. Uh, the Word of God is true. It is not trying to Give us history, it incorporates history. It is not trying to prove where they are and what is in existence at the time. They are just they just incorporate it because it is historical. And everything that the word has ever said was happening or there has happened and is there. Now let me say that they did have different names for some of the different kings, just like any other language has a different name for those kinds of people by their own language. That's all that is. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a big thing to have to deal with. And the Egyptians refer to the Hebrews many times. Uh, they did actually start referring to them as Hebrews uh, in their language, but first they called them the hairy people. The first time you see them come up, they're the hairy people. But then they, they start calling them Hebrews, okay? So here the deal is, is that God is in control, and he has put us in a position to where he has sent us that we are actually surrounded by our enemies. Now, you can do more and have more effect on others when you're surrounded by them. I tell the story, it's a true story, and uh, I'm going to misplace exactly where it took. I think it was the Korean War, and Chester Pulling uh, was a uh, colonel, I believe, at the time. He is the only U.S. Marine that ever made five stars, okay? And he did, uh, oh, that is, U.S. Marine made five stars from the ground, from an enlisted private all the way up, and he did that through war. But Chester Pulling, they were surrounded by the enemy, it's either the Second World War or 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 uh, or Korea. I can't forget. Which, I think it might have been Second World. War. I don't know, but anyway, I, I have. To, I can't remember it. But it was he was. They were surrounded. The, he sent out scouts. They came back and they told him. They said the enemy's on the right. They're on the left. They're, they got us completely surrounded. 
Chester Pulling stood up. Bullets, they said, flying all around him. I don't know if that was smart or not, but he stands up and he turns around and he looks at the men that are down there. He said, the enemy is in before us. The enemy is behind us. They are on the right and they are on the left. He said, good, now they can't get away. We need an attitude that when we're surrounded, that we don't give in to what's surrounding us. And we stand up and we say, the enemy's all around us. Good, now they can't get away. Hallelujah. They can't get away from us now. Hallelujah. Verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and he said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. I want you to see the attitude of somebody that has faith compared to someone that does not. Even though we're surrounded, even though they have walls that are are great and their defensive positions are hard and they got some arguments that are hard to deal with, nevertheless, we are able to go up and take it. Why? Because you see, like David facing Goliath, we don't come with a sword and a shield. Our weapons of warfare are not tanks and guns. Rockets and planes. It's the name of the Lord. Though I might have five stones, and God expects me to use what I have, but it's not the stones my confidence is in. It's not my ability my confidence is in. My confidence is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My confidence is not in my ability. My confidence is in the name of the Lord. And my confidence is not in the ability of men trying to get things straight that may have been wronged. My confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. (laughs) Well, they didn't let Caleb get get by with that very long. They come back in the next verse, 31, and they say, but the men that went up with him said, we're we're not able to go up against this people. They're stronger than us. Got him now coming and saying, we're not able to go up against this thing. They're stronger than us. (laughs) Let's just throw in the towel. Let's just give in to everything. And let's just let them take all our rights away. They're stronger than we are. They're not stronger than we are. And we're able to defeat this situation. Verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Okay, guys, we just might as well surrender to all of this. Let them impose upon us something that the very nation was founded upon. Let us give up all of our religious liberties and rights so that they can implement what they want to implement. And you are going to be sorry like every other country that ever allowed it to happen was sorry and did not, by the way, remain that way. They ended up having to shed blood to get out of it. You and I have to understand we have a great opportunity right now. We are living in the greatest nation in the world. I don't care what anybody else says. The United States of America is the greatest nation in the world. It has offered liberty and freedom. It has encouraged other nations to seek a democratic republic. 
Hallelujah. We are still an inspiration to the rest of the world. And many have embraced our thoughts. They have altered constitutions to incorporate liberties and freedoms for everyone. You and I have to understand, you and I are free people. We are a free people. Hallelujah. And though this land eats up or it start to eat up the inhabitants of thereof, it's uncalled for, some of the things that are being said and people that are saying them are being patted on the back for doing so because the focus is to stop the move of God. In this time in which we are being focused on, we knew it was coming. How many of us have not been preached to? How many of us have not been taught that the day was going to come? And now that it is upon us, why do we think some strange thing is happening to us? Do we lay down and let them take it? No, we cannot do that. We must be outspoken, and we must stand up for rights. We must stand up for the right of the unborn. I'm telling you, it's guaranteed in the Constitution that people say, no, it's not. It is. (laughs) The liberty to life and the pursuit of happiness, you and I, and our freedom of religion is guaranteed through the Constitution. Everyone that is elected to office swears an oath or affirms an oath to uphold and protect the Constitution of the United States against all foreign and domestic enemies. They have taken an oath to uphold it, not to breach it and to go against it. And we, the people, must hold them accountable to it when they do breach it. Praise God. You see, the inhabitants of the land, they're saying, hey, man, they're just going to eat you up. They got some They got some really people, influential people in power, and they do. But God is greater than they are. God is a lot greater than they are. And the United States of America, I believe with all of my heart, is going to be that great eagle that flies in and takes Israel to the place of safety. We are her protector, and we will remain to be her protector. I don't know if we got to go through a little time uh, lapse here or not, but it's not going to stay. We are going to become that protector and remain that protector of Israel. Praise God. Verse 33, we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. and We are in our sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. Something important I want to point out here to you is that when you see yourself as a grasshopper, then the enemy does. They may be big and bad, but when you start seeing yourself as ineffective, they start seeing you as ineffective. But while you see yourself as effective, then they must contend with that. Don't forget that. Praise God. It's the way you see yourself. And if if you look at yourself in your own power, Caleb and Joshua didn't look at themselves in their own power. Moses didn't look at himself in his own power. He looked at himself as that God was with him. That God was moving him, and it was by faith. And this is how we operate right now, by faith. There may be giants, but we got a God bigger than any giant. Do you hear me? We have a God bigger than any giant. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 3, verses 15 through 18. Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? You see, sometimes governments go too far. 
and they try to uh, hurt or to limit your liberties. And when they do, they're going to pass all kinds of laws that you're supposed to obey. We look at some of this stuff today that has taken place, and we, we reference it as political correctness. But it's not really politically correct. It really is not. Because your idea is, hey, we are an elite group over you bunch of peons. And you really don't have anything to say. What we, we tell you what to do. We don't have to do it. And we've seen this displayed over and over and over again by those that impose such crazy laws. Okay? But here we are. We are in the place where we are. Not denying. Not denying this virus that has taken the lives of, a, they say what? 250,000 people. And I don't know how all of that is, but let's just say it's true. A lot of people have died. People have died before. I'm not saying that it's an okay thing. It's not. And we should take all every preventive thing we, that we can do to keep it from spreading, just like what we are doing. Okay. However, let me say this. The excuse of using this virus to implement laws that are contrary to the Constitution of the United States is not right. They are seeing how far they can go. They are pushing the limit on us, and you and I must be firm and hold true to the Word of God when they tell you that you cannot worship then they have gone too far, okay? Uh, they want you to bow. They've got all the music playing. You can't turn on your television without seeing all the music playing, all the, all the stuff over and over and over again. Hallelujah. But let me say this to you. You and I do not have to bow to them and give heed to them. Let me take you to verse 16, Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. Hey, guys, I know that this is taking place, but I'm not careful. We're not holding back to answer you in this. He's, verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Verse 18. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods nor worship the golden image which you have set up. These things may be imposed upon us, but we're not careful to tell you. We're not holding back our voice. We're not withholding our vote. We're not withholding our, our opinions. We're not withholding anything that God has given us to stand upon. We are going to speak boldly about it. We're going to tell you that, hey, no matter if God delivers us or not, he's able to, but if he chooses not to, we're not going to bow to your music. We're not giving in to what you're, what you're, what you're imposing upon us. We will not bow to your music. Uh, and we will not worship this image. Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Now, I want to settle an argument right here. I want to settle an argument. The Bible is giving testimony. The figure that was in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was not Jesus. 
the fi- it said like unto the Son of God. That was a reference unto angelic beings. Right here, the scripture calls the figure that was in the fiery furnace with them an angelic being. It may have been a theophany of God. That is, a way in which God took on a physical form for a, uh, for a, a short period of time in order to relate to us. It may have been. There's the angel of the Lord. There's lots of theophanies. But the idea that it was Jesus there prior to his birth, null and void. It is not what has happened. It could be Yahweh in theophany as an angelic being. I don't know. It just says an angel. Okay? So that is, that's the word. It is, remember, the Bible interprets itself. The Bible interprets itself. Okay, don't ever let that get away from you. Okay? <clears throat> and he says that they have stood upon the word of God. They have stood upon their belief. They even went against the king's decree. They did not bow. They did not give in to it. And their God has made it possible for them to be delivered from it. Church of the Most High God, I'm telling you right now that whatever we're going to go through, it may even be that we are put under the fire. But if you and I will stand firm and hold on to our our trust in God, then he is going to deliver us from it. Because in this time of falling away and great distress is also going to be a time of great revival and outpouring. There are going to be more people one to Jesus Christ in this time than there has ever been in history, than there has ever been in any other time. Don't you let your guard down. Don't you get down. Don't you fall in with the testimony of the ten. Amen. You remain holding the testimony of the two. Uh, you Always, 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 God's the true, the faith those that are faithful are always seem like to be in the minority when they give their uh, voice to what is taking place and when they resist the attitude of the majority. But God is not looking for a people that is going to say what everybody else is saying. He's coming for a people that are saying what he is saying and embrace what he is saying. You and I stand this day in a time in which we are going to be accounted for. And when he comes, there's going to be millions that are going to be translated and caught up to meet him in the air. And it's going to be because you and and I did not withhold our testimony that when we went and spied out the land, we did see the promises of God. Hey, even in all of this, the promises of God are still true. It flows with milk and honey. There might be giants there, and there are, but God is able to defeat the sons of Anak. Hallelujah. Whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to give in to this mess? Or are you going to embrace and stand strong and still believe my God is able to do anything? He still delivers. He still heals. He still fills people with the Holy Ghost. He still empowers us. He's still God. He still sits on the throne. Whose report are you going to believe? Amen. Musicians, I'd like for you to come. I don't know. There's a lot of people giving in, but I'm not going to give in. I am going to stay living for God, and I'm going to trust him. I'm believing him for great revival. Now, they can't keep this thing going all the time, y'all. This can't last forever. I don't care what they want to do. It cannot. But when this is lifted, and because of it, 
you're going to see people coming to God like you have never saw them come before because you remain faithful and you remain a witness and a testimony to his glory. I'd like for you to stand with me if you would. We are in an, entering a time of thanksgiving. It is a holiday, by the way, that is really being fought. Not a biblical holiday, but it's being fought. Why? Because people are being called on to give thanks to God for the what they have. You see, this battle is against God. It's really not against you and me. It's against God. And so, this day, when you gather with your families, I don't care how you choose to do it, remember that this is all about Him having His way in our life. First Thanksgiving, I know there's some discrepancies, but the, the truth of the matter is that without the Native Americans coming to help those first colonists, they would have never made it. And so the colonists who knew God decided that they were going to get together and they were going to give thanks to God with those that, that he used to make provision. I think that's the same thing we need to do today. We need to give God the glory and thank Him for His provision. Amen. Can you worship Him right now as we sing?
worship him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you pray with me? Father, we hold before you, almighty God, every saint right now that is struggling, uh, those that are homebound, those that are uh, more susceptible to getting this virus, we pray that your hand be on them, you protect them, you keep them. For all of those that have contacted this virus, we ask, Almighty God, that you will be with them, we come against this attack on them, we pray your healing and deliverance in their lives. We ask also that you will continue to manifest yourself in the lives of your people and that you will deal greatly with all of those, O oh God, that govern us, that you will minister to their hearts and draw them to you, that you will reveal yourself to them like never before. Behold, Almighty God, these things to be true, that you and only you, Almighty God, are the one in which we put our trust. We love you. We give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Can you give him another hand, praise? Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God.